Base jumping. Base jumping, also sometimes written as BASE jumping, is parachuting or wingsuit flying from a fixed structure or cliff. Base is an acronym that stands for four categories of fixed objects from which one can jump, building, antenna, span, and earth, cliff. Due to the lower altitudes of the jumps, base jumping is significantly more dangerous than skydiving from a plane. In the U.S., base jumping is currently regarded by many as a fringe extreme sport or stunt. In some jurisdictions or locations, base jumping is prohibited or illegal, however, in some places it is permitted such as Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho. Base jumping became known to the wider public through depictions in a number of action movies and being featured in the 2014 documentary Sunshine Superman. The acronym BASE, now more commonly BASE, was coined by filmmaker Carl Bonish, his wife Jean Bonish, Phil Smith, and Phil Mayfield. Carl Bonish was the catalyst behind modern base jumping, and in 1978, he filmed the first base jumps to be made using ram air parachutes and the freefall tracking technique from El Capitan in Yosemite National Park. While base jumps had been made prior to that time, the El Capitan activity was the effective birth of what is now called base jumping. Base numbers are awarded to those who have made at least one jump from each of the four categories buildings, antennas, spans, and earth. When Phil Smith and Phil Mayfield jumped together from a Houston skyscraper on January 18, 1981, they became the first to attain the exclusive base numbers base number one and number two, respectively, having already jumped from an antenna, spans, and earthen objects. Jean and Carl Bonish qualified for base numbers three and four soon after. A separate award was soon enacted for night base jumping when Mayfield completed each category at night, becoming night base number one with Smith qualifying a few weeks later. Fausto Varancio is widely believed to have performed a parachute jumping experiment for real land, therefore, to be the first man to build and test a parachute according to the story passed on, Varancio, in 1617, then over 65 years old, implemented his design and tested the parachute by jumping from St. Mark's Campanile in Venice. This event was documented some 30 years later in a book Mathematical Magic or, the Wonders That May Be Performed by Mechanical Geometry, London, 1648, written by John Wilkins, the Secretary of the Royal Society in London. However, these and other sporadic incidents were one-time experiments, not the systematic pursuit of a new form of parachuting. After 1978, the film jumps from El Capitan were repeated, not as a publicity exercise or as a movie stunt but as a true recreational activity. It was this that popularized base jumping more widely among parachutists. Carl Bonish continued to publish films and informational magazines on base jumping until his death in 1984 after a base jump off the troll wall. By this time, the concept had spread among skydivers worldwide, with hundreds of participants making fixed object jumps. During the early 80s, nearly all base jumps were made using standard skydiving equipment, including two parachutes, main and reserve, and deployment components. Later on, specialized equipment and techniques were developed specifically for the unique needs of base jumping. Upon completing a jump from all of the four object categories, a jumper may choose to apply for a base number, awarded sequentially. The 1000th application for a base number was filed in March 2005 and base number 1000 was awarded to Matt Harley Moylanen of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Over 2,000 base numbers have been issued. Guinness World Records first listed a base jumping record with Carl Bonish's 1984 leap from Trollvedge, Troll Wall, in Norway. It was described as the highest base jump. The jump was made two days before Bonish's death at the same site. This record category is still in the Guinness Book and is currently held by Valerie Rozov. On October 5, 2016, Russia's Valery Rozov leapt from a height of around 7,700 meters, 25,262 feet, from Cho Oyu, the sixth highest mountain in the Himalayas, located on the China-Nepal border. He fell for around 90 seconds before opening his parachute, landing on a glacier approximately two minutes later at an altitude of around 6,000 meters, 19,685 feet. On July 8, 2006 Captain Daniel G. Schilling set the Guinness World Record for the most base jumps in a 24-hour period. Schilling jumped off the Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho, a record 201 times.
Space Space competitions have been held since the early 1980s, with accurate landings or freefall aerobatics used as the judging criteria. Recent years have seen a formal competition held at the High Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, judged on landing accuracy. In 2018 at E.K. Dallin, Norway a world record was set with 69 base jumpers jumping from the cliff Kathamaran. Base jumping grew out of skydiving. Base jumps are generally made from much lower altitudes than skydives, and a base jump takes place close to the object serving as the jump platform. Because base jumps generally entail slower air speeds than typical skydives, due to the limited altitude, a base jumper does not always reach terminal velocity. Because higher air speeds enable jumpers more aerodynamic control of their bodies, as well as more positive and quick parachute openings, the longer the delay, the better. Base jumping is significantly more dangerous than similar sports such as skydiving from aircraft. Skydivers use the airflow to stabilize their position, allowing the parachute to deploy cleanly. Base jumpers, falling at lower speeds, have less aerodynamic control, and may tumble. The attitude of the body at the moment of jumping determines the stability of flight in the first few seconds, before sufficient airspeed is built up to enable aerodynamic stability. On low base jumps, Parachute deployment takes place during this early phase of flight, so if a poor launch leads into a tumble, the jumper may not be able to correct this before the opening. If the parachute is deployed while the jumper is tumbling, there is a high risk of entanglement or malfunction. The jumper may also not be facing the right direction. Such an off-heading opening is not as problematic in skydiving, but an off-heading opening that results in object strike has caused many serious injuries and deaths in base jumping. At an altitude of Having been in free fall for at least, a skydiver is falling at approximately, and is approximately 10.9 seconds from the ground. Most base jumps are made from less than. For example, a base jump from an object is about 5.6 seconds from the ground if the jumper remains in free fall. On a base jump, the parachute must open at about half the airspeed of a similar skydive, and more quickly, in a shorter distance fallen. Standard skydiving parachute systems are not designed for this situation, so base jumpers often use specially designed harnesses and parachute containers, with extra-large pilot chutes, and many jump with only one parachute, since there would be little time to utilize a reserve parachute. In the early days of base jumping, people used modified skydiving gear, such as by removing the deployment bag and slider, stowing the lines in a tail pocket, and fitting a large pilot chute. However, Modified skydiving gear is then prone to kinds of malfunction that are rare in normal skydiving, such as line overs and broken lines. Modern purpose-built base jumping equipment is considered to be much safer and more reliable. Another risk is that most base jumping venues have very small areas in which to land. A beginner skydiver, after parachute deployment, may have a three-minute or more parachute ride to the ground. A base jump room will have a parachute ride of only 10 to 15 seconds. One way to make a parachute open very quickly is to use a static line or direct bag. These devices form an attachment between the parachute and the jump platform, which stretches out the parachute and suspension lines as the jumper falls, before separating and allowing the parachute to inflate. This method enables the very lowest jumps below to be made, although most base jumpers are more motivated to make higher jumps involving free fall. This method is similar to the paratroopers deployment system, also called a PCA short for pilot shoot assist. Base jumping itself is generally not illegal in most places. However, in many cases such as building and antenna jumps, jumping is done covertly, because the owners of these objects are generally reluctant to allow their object to be used as a platform. Jumpers who are caught can expect to be charged with trespassing, as well as having charges like breaking and entering, reckless endangerment, vandalism, or other such charges pressed against them. In some jurisdictions it may be permissible to use land until specifically told not to. Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho, is an example of a man-made structure in the United States where base jumping is allowed year-round without a permit. Once a year, on the third Saturday in October, Bridge Day, permission to base jump has explicitly been granted at the New River Gorge Bridge in Fayetteville, West Virginia. The New River Gorge Bridge deck is 876 feet. 267 meters, above the river. This annual event attracts about 450 base jumpers and nearly 200,000 spectators. 1,100 jumps may occur during the six hours that it's legal provided good conditions. On October 21, 2006, veteran base jumper Brian Lee Schubert of Altaloma, California, 
died while jumping from the New River Gorge Bridge during Bridge Day activities because his parachute opened late, he plummeted to his death in the waters below. Jumps continued after the recovery of his body. He and his friend Michael Pelkey were the first to make a base jump from El Capitan in Yosemite National Park in 1966. The National Park Service has the authority to ban specific activities in U.S. national parks and has done so for base jumping. The authority comes from 36 CFR 2.173, which prohibits delivering or retrieving a person or object by parachute, helicopter, or other airborne means, except in emergencies involving public safety or serious property loss, or pursuant to the terms and conditions of a permit. Under that regulation, base is not banned but is allowable if a permit is issued by the superintendent, which means that a mechanism to allow base in national parks was always in place. The 2001 National Park Service management policies state that base is not an appropriate public use activity within national park areas, 2001 Management Policy 8.2.2.7, however, Policy 8.2.2.7 in the 2006 volume of National Park Service management policies, which superseded the 2001 edition, states parachuting, or base jumping, whether from an aircraft, structure, or natural feature, is generally prohibited by 36 CFR 2.17a, 3. However, if determined through a park planning process to be an appropriate activity, it may be allowed pursuant to the terms and conditions of a permit. During the early days of base jumping, the NPS issued permits that authorized jumps from El Capitan. This program ran for three months in 1980 and then collapsed amid allegations of abuse by unauthorized jumpers. The NPS has since vigorously enforced the ban, charging jumpers with aerial delivery into a national park. One jumper drowned in the Merced River while evading arresting park rangers, having declared no way are they gonna get me. Let them chase me, I'll just laugh in their faces and jump in the river. Despite incidents like this one, illegal jumps continue in Yosemite at a rate estimated at a few hundred per year often at night or dawn. El Capitan, Half Dome, and Glacier Point have been used as jump sites. Other U.S. public land, including land controlled by the Bureau of Land Management, does not ban air delivery, and there are numerous jumpable objects on the land. The legal position is different at other sites and in other countries. For example, in Norway's Lysefjord, from the mountain Kjerag, base jumpers are mad welcome. Many sites in the European Alps, near Chamonix and on the Eiger, are also open to jumpers. Some other Norwegian places, like the Troll Wall, are banned because of dangerous rescue missions in the past. In Austria, jumping from mountain cliffs is generally allowed, whereas the use of bridges, such as the Europa Brook near Innsbruck, Tyrol, or dams is generally prohibited. Australia has some of the toughest stances on base jumping, it specifically bans base jumping from certain objects, such as the Sydney Harbour Bridge. A study of base jumping fatalities estimated that the overall annual fatality risk during the year 2002 was one fatality per 60 participants. A study of 20,850 base jumps from the same site, the Kjerag Massif in Norway, reported nine fatalities over the 11 year period from 1995 to 2005, or one in every 2,317 jumps. However, at that site, one in every 254 jumps over that period resulted in a non-fatal accident. Base jumping is one of the most dangerous recreational activities in the world, with a fatality and injury rate 43 times higher than parachuting from a plane. The base fatality list maintained by BlinkMagazine.com records 328 deaths for base jumping since April 1981. Base jumping is often featured in action movies. The 2002 Vin Diesel film 30 includes a scene where Diesel's character catapults himself off the Forest Hill Bridge in an open-top car, landing safely as the car crashes on the ground. The movie includes a scene in which the main characters jump with wingsuits from the IFC Tower in Hong Kong and fly over the Bank of China, finally opening their parachutes to land on a moving freighter. The stunt was done live, with no special effects, by base jumpers Martin Rosen and Per Eriksson, members of the Swedish team Batesen. The scene was filmed by Air 2 Air cameraman Mikael Nordkvist, from the same team. Since the 1976 Mount Asgard jump featured in the pre credit sequence Ado the Spy Who Loved Me, James Bond movies have featured several base jumps, including one from the Eiffel Tower in 1985's A View to a Kill, The Rock of Gibraltar in 1987's The Living Daylights, and in 2002's Die Another Day, P. 
Pierce Brosnan as James Bond jumps from a melting iceberg. Out of the James Bond jumps, only the Mount Asgard and Eiffel Tower jumps were filmed live, the rest were special effects. In 2005's Batman Begins, Bruce Wayne uses base jumping as inspiration for his memory cloth cape. A series of base jumps are featured in the video for a remix of M83's Lower Your Eyelids to Die with the Sun. The 1938 Sierra Club film Three on a Row pens with a climber jumping off Baldy Mountain rather than dealing with the hassle of repelling, to the horror of a climbing partner, only to deploy a parachute hidden in his pack. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.